Here we have a Sony 14P. And we're going to open up and explore the insides. My model specifically is SVE 14 A16 FSH. But in general, it just tells you that just tells you what it is inside. We're going to put your laptop on something soft so you don't damage it and flip to the back. So we're going to remove the battery first. Just press the button and remove the battery. We're now going to remove the back cover to expose the RAM. There's one screw holding it down. There's a leave, there's like a tab here. Something that sticks out slightly, you just lift it up. Just put some effort into it and the thing pops off. That black thing you can see is just sticky tape, you can say. You don't need it, you can just remove it. There's two RAM slots here, so maximum 16 gigs of RAM. Pull away to two sides and the RAM pops up. Next, we're going to remove the hard drive cover. There's two screws holding the hard drive cover down. And same with the RAM slot, it has the tab sticking out for you to lift up. There's two screws holding the hard drive down. The other two screws come from the back cover, so you're not missing two screws if you're looking at it. To remove the hard drive, you have to push the hard drive to the right. And then there's a tab there for you to lift up the hard drive. I'm just going to put it back in to show you again to the right and lift up the tab. Now you have to remove every screw on the back. So we can remove the back cover. This screw is the DVD drive screw. After you remove it, you can drag the DVD drive out. So the idea is to remove every screw you see on the back.
So now that we removed all the screws, you just need your prying tool to pry it open, or you can put your hand in the DVD cover, which gives you leverage. I'm just going to get my prying tool now. comes off relatively really easy if you removed all the screws That's the graphic card, that's the fan, that's the CPU. That's the wireless card. We're going to remove the wireless card now. We're going to take off your antennas. And there's sticky tape in the way of the screw. Now we're going to remove the screws for the heating. The graphic card cannot be changed. So whatever comes with your laptop, you must keep it. The CPU can be replaced. So there's four screws holding the CPU heating down. We're going to use the, remove the power and the LCD cable is wrapped around it, wrapped around the fan, and there's one screw holding the fan down to the board. Here you go, there's some sticky tape holding the LCD cable next to the fan. You can re just remove, just peel off the sticky tape. Try not to dirty the sticky tape, so you can use it later on if you want to. Now we're going to remove the fan off the heating. There's four screws holding the fan from the heating down. We need to remove these four screws so we can clean the heating. And there's a bit of sticky tape holding the fan to the heating. Just remove it. It's unnecessary. So here you go. Dust is normally trapped here. And I've got a bit of dust. Now we're going to get a towel to clean our thermal face of our heating.
you don't need any special liquids or anything to clean it just clean it and make sure it looks good and shiny or clean it to the best of your ability try to use a cloth and not tissue as tissue breaks Now we finish off cleaning up all the firmware place, I'm going to show you how to remove the CPU. So you need a flathead screwdriver, rotate it anti-clockwise, and then there's a triangle here, it shows you what direction the CPU goes in, that's it, and you just lift it up. The CPU only goes in one direction, just showing you the triangle on the bottom corner, it matches a, tri a triangle like shape on the motherboard and you need to screw to screw back clockwise half a circle to close it or to lock it in place and reapply thermal paste I'm using Noctor NTH1 for the CPU just use one rice grain size of thermal, thermal compound and for the graphic card just use half a rice grain if you want to spread out lengthwise, you can for the CPU as it's in rectangular, not square. But you don't do not spread it out to cover the whole CPU as when you put the heatsink back on, it does that for you. So, don't press down on it on the heatsink when you put it there just align it with the screw holes then once you align it you can press it down remember to screw in the screw according to the numbers this way the thermal paste gets spread evenly because if you screw one side down first it will push all the thermal paste down to the other side spreading it out unevenly I'm screwing the screws back in order, so if you can't see the numbers on it, just follow the way I screwed it in. And that's about it, thanks for watching.
this disc assembly is relatively pretty easy. All the screws are slightly similar. The small one is small, there's not many of them. The big ones are basically all the same. Just be careful not to screw the big screw in the lower hole, or else it goes through the other side and pieces your motherboard and can damage it. And that's about it. Thanks for watching.